1984 won't be like 1984. Get your iPod. iPod's here. Do you like your Macintosh? Do you like your Macintosh? Your Macintosh. Yeah, I, I have a, a similar experience. I mean, my very first episode I ever did, I kind of recorded it in my car. I didn't even tell my wife I was doing this. I got in trouble for that later, but I still haven't told my wife. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Honey, what is this twit thing? <laughs> oh, it's just a club. And so I... I I no idea. I, I threw it out there, and I was going to do a news... I set out to do this Mac News podcast. It was going to be short. Stop to get a sip of soda. That's the sort of thing we're going to edit out. And the, fact, and the fact that I'm, if I'm standing in front of a microphone that's supposed to be good at recording my voice means that I'm sort of concentrating on talking slowly so people can hear me. And again, keeping my nose away from the mic and that sort of stuff. You get it talking slowly. Talk yeah. slowly on mic? <laughs> I've got software that's doing podcasts, and you should go to, uh, you know, iTunes and do it. Those are new people. That's new people that could find yeah. out about our stuff, and they're bringing them into a market that then helps us find new listeners. It's been, in some ways, though, it's a negative. I mean, we're really ghettoized into the Mac marketplace, and we're, I think, somewhat stymied by the fact that it is such a Mac product. I mean, I really don't think podcasting is going to break out until... You see it on the desktop on Windows Vista. I hate to say it, but I mean that's you know if if all we are is iTunes, we got a problem. If all we are is Apple TV, we are not on a, we're not peers with mainstream media. We are in an Apple ghetto, and I don't. As much as I love Max, I don't think that's where you really uh, are going to see. You're, you're never going to grow beyond a certain point. I, I I agree. Podcasting and blogging to a greater extent has actually changed mainstream media and the tech world to some extent. Because if you look at publications, if you look at what Macworld has done with Mac user mentoring into a blog, if you look at any number of mainstream media outlets out there, you're going to find that they're providing more opportunities for feedback, they're creating more blogs, even their mainstream actually have to pay to get out there from the media uh, to get attention, or you have to pay people who are marketing specialists who can assist you, and that's an advantage. Yeah, but it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Look, I, I, I plug my podcasts on all things considered, Regis and Kelly, a daily television show, a weekend weekend radio show in the number one market, and I'm still plateaued. And I think that it's not because people don't know about it. I think it's hard to get podcasts. But then, now the question that I have for you is: Does the once does the iPhone change something? <laughs> Somebody say iPhone small market. Why? Because it's magic. Because it's because I got podcast device. Because it's because I have Wi-Fi, and, and this is just because I have an easy. I have, I have something I sub subscribe to that I that I have Wi-Fi. The truth is, it's, it's a lot harder to listen to a podcast than it is to listen to a radio show. And and some that there's you know you can market all you want, but and, and what you'll do is you'll hit there. I I estimate. I'm guessing. But the biggest podcasts I know, it's about four hundred thousand. Is kind of the top you can reach. Right. And, uh, and I haven't found anybody who's got, you know, guaranteed more than 400,000 listeners. And I'm guessing that's kind of the universe. And we're, there's a glass ceiling that, you know, it, now if you only have five listeners, you've got a lot of growth you can do. But, but, there, but at some point, you get to the point where you're just not going to grow. And, and, and we need to figure out what it is. And it's more than marketing. Isn't, isn't this isn't the good news on this, I think, that this is a technology problem? Yes. And it's something that technology can solve, yes. and look at where we're a bunch of geeks yeah. around here. I mean, somebody has the answer out there. I don't, I don't think we're lost. I, I do know one market that I want to move on to that I think a lot of us maybe don't tap into, and we sort of touched on briefly, is the fact that podcasting is international. You know, right now, it seems like the majority of the audience is in the U.S. And I've got a couple international podcasters here. I have uh, stuff from Palmcast, and you do your show in multiple languages. And he's from from Germany. And then um, Don McAllister from the U.K., who does screencasts online. So I just want to talk to you guys. Hey, Don. Uh, if you could uh, tell us a little bit about what the challenges are podcasting internationally and and. and you know, the type, what the type of work you do. What are you seeing? Is it different in Europe versus what we're doing in the U.S.? You first. Okay. Um, it is different, really, because I still have to run over people and say, hey, I do a podcast, and then I look at them and say, a pod what? Yeah. So um, it is definitely harder, and um, we're not reaching uh, the same barrier. When I listen to 400,000 downloads, I can only dream about that. Um, and, um, yeah, we still have to communicate on the word podcast and on... And of course you have the reaction of I don't have an iPod, 
Um, but um, yeah, so it's, that's definitely another problem. And the other problem is like, looks like 80% of 90% of the content right now available is in English. So if you don't speak English, of course you it's like a big handicap worldwide. But uh, you're not yeah. going to be able to, to. Well, your choice is going to be a smaller. If you just talk about Mac podcast, um, only in Europe. You have far more, far less than here. I've been dropping flyer here, and I've been saying, "Hey, I'm a podcast about the Mac." And they look at me and say, "So what?" Um, because there is a lot. And if you take out English, if you take only the podcast not speaking English about the Mac, I guess we're like 10 or 20 or whatever worldwide. So um, that's a totally different market. So there's a lot of opportunity, right? In yeah, Europe. Well, basically that's how I made it. Uh, because uh, when I started, I was like the, f the first podcast about the Mac in French. And uh, today they still ask me why are you the first because there, there is all those big websites about the Mac in France, and I just say oh, well because maybe because I, I, I look in, I look at the US and I know when the things are coming and when I started doing my podcast in May 2005, just before the iTunes 4.9 release, nobody knew what podcast was all about. So when um, recently I just started the Spanish version, and funny enough, I also am like now the most downloaded podcast about the Mac in Spanish because I also don't have a... Are there any languages you don't speak? <laughs> Chinese? Chinese, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's French, English, German, and... Uh, uh, but do you know pig Latin? Spanish, right? <laughs> Spanish. If I had to pick one language, I think Spanish would be the language yeah. I would podcast. That's the reason why I started Spanish. Massive market. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I thought about that um, a long time. We only started like in May 2006, so one year after that. And um, well, I'm a Spanish guy born in Belgium who lives in Germany. So. <laughs> that's see, that's the problem. <laughs> Do you have a Flemish <laughs> podcast? Yet? Uh, I, I can speak Flemish, but uh, I have like the biggest conference in the world, which was the podcast called One More Thing, and I have a lot of, of listeners, and so I, I have no market over there. Um, but um, yeah, so um, I thought about Spanish, and I was really willing to do that because I love Spanish. But the market over there, the Apple market, is like um, they have like two percent of market share, and nobody know what a Mac is in Spain. So, uh, but I still started it, and uh, it looks like now people are getting what a Mac is and what an iPod is, and now um, I get I get tons of email of, pe of people saying, yeah, it's cool that that, that uh, what you're doing, blah blah blah, and even though you have an accent, we don't care, the content is okay. Do you get listeners in Central and South America as well, or? Yeah, I get yeah. a lot of emails from Mexico and yeah. from uh, all those 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 countries. How, how do you see the market, of course? Yeah, we have a lot of listeners there uh, ourselves in mm -hmm. English. I mean, yeah. I think that there's a huge demand. There is a huge, and it's a growing market, just like right. America. Right. How do you say blah 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 in German? I guess blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. blah, 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. I now know three German words. You say blah blah blah. Now, Don, I mean, you're, you, you're obviously in English, so That's but right, you yeah. may have a different experience, but you're yeah, still... Yeah, it's, um, well, I've got sort of two different angles to come from, really. Um, I mean, Screencast Online is a video podcast which comes out every week. It's a Mac tutorial podcast, and that has got a global reach. Uh, and by the way, can I just say this is so alien, um, being a podcaster, to be in front of so many people, although, you know, the audience is quite big, it's really strange to be in front of physical people. But, um, yeah, I was going cast online, it goes all over the world, I'm, I'm constantly amazed by the uh, amount of feedback I get from, from everywhere. Uh, and I think something we've not really picked up on very much today, I know we've been talking a lot about podcasting as an industry, but the, the relationship with the audience is, is something that really sort of rings true with me, in, in that, with having no sort of uh, media background, I actually come from an IT background, and I've given that up to do podcasting, and the relationship, I very much feel that I have a one-to-one -one relationship with a lot of the listeners and a lot of the viewers who write to me, so that, that part is, is great. So, Screencast Online is global, there's no really uh, any particular international issues with that. Now, I did start off another podcast called the Euromac Podcast, which was really to give a European voice to some of the Mac issues, because we do feel very much sort of on the sideline as far as the Mac community, I think, in Europe. Because obviously it is a US-based US -based company, and, you know, little things irritate us, like we don't get TV shows in iTunes, and, you know, we, we perhaps get things a little bit later than others, we don't get movies. Uh, and that was quite interesting because I did get a lot of feedback from the Europeans saying, great, you know, we need the voice. And I got a lot of feedback from US people as well saying, great, we want to, we want to hear what's going on the other side of the, of the world. So, you know, that, that, that was quite good. Now, I'll put that one to bed for a little while while I concentrate on, on making Screencast Online more of a growing concern. But uh, I just got in with, uh, with Chuck Joyner of Mac Notables and uh, I'm going to be doing like a European update every, every month or something like that. So I think we need to hook up, uh, you know, hook up so we yeah. can get some more feedback from the European people. 
And as far as your podcast goes, I, I think I'm going to move it into kind of the last thing I want to talk about, and it's the one question I think that's on everybody's mind, and that's monetization. I mean, I know some people up here have sponsors. Don, you have a little different model, and I'm going to bring up a couple other podcasters who have a little different model of monetization, but I mean, it's a challenge when you decide that you want to do this as a career. I know most of us have, a lot of us have day jobs, some of us don't. Um, I'd be interested to hear how everybody's experience has been and what the challenges are with, with regards to monetization, as, at least as we see them. Well, from, from my perspective, I mean, I did start out as a hobby podcast, um, but the particular niche that I carved out for myself doing the video tutorials, it did lend itself very well to, to, to monetization. And I sort of realized after about the first eight months or so that there probably was a, you know, a way I could monetize it. And then I created a membership scheme, which has become very successful. So I now have a free show every week, and I also have a membership scheme as well, so people can sign up to get extra content and high-definition versions of the shows. And that was so successful, so I did actually manage to give up the day job. But that mightn't be everybody's goal. It might just be, you know, to, su to sustain the podcast itself. But uh, sort of, the nice thing about it is um, it's a complete one-man band. I mean, I do everything from all the production work, all the post-production work, all the, you know, everything, the website, the marketing, you know, you name it, I do it. And that's one of the things that really attracted me to, to becoming a full-time podcaster. It won't, it won't work for everybody because it, it is a training podcast, so there is an inherent value to the, to the podcast that I give. You know, people do attach a monetary value to the content because it's, it's training. And, uh, you know, if you become a member, you get, you know, back catalog members. There's all sorts of, of ways I try to persuade people to become a member. But, you know, it's, 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 there's a big audience out there. You know, people, people will pay for content. It's all down to the content. I, I think, you know, people will pay for good content. Don't you get over the barrier of that everything within podcasting should be free? Because I think that is still in a lot of people's mind. Because they're so used to getting free podcasts, and they assume that all podcasts should be free. And, you know, perhaps most of them should be, but there's always a place for monetization. That's the reason why when I drop flyer I say free broadcast, because uh, it's not obvious, but it's a really good business model you have. Um, I don't have the same one, not at all. I, I, right now, I don't ask people to pay for which doesn't mean I will ask one day or another. Um, but I just work, it works out for me pretty much um, okay um, on sponsoring and, and advertising. And I work also in, in, a, in, a, in France with an advertising agency, a podcast advertising agency. I've been in touch with the guys at Pod Show and I, they, I respect them a lot, but I was not really interested in entering um, the network itself. Uh, I just wanted an ad uh, company, just bringing the ad and, and, and bringing money basically. So, um, and, um, and it pretty much works out, so I also quit my job. I used to be a Windows developer, but that's not a good publicity for Apple. Um, <laughs> and it pretty much paid a lot, so now I guess I'm earning like five or ten times less. But I, I, it's a lot of fun, so and life is about risk, and I wanted to stay at home with my daughter and my wife. So, okay, it worked out, and now, now I get a lot of other contacts, because this is something you have to see also, um, a side of earning money with sponsoring and all the things. You get to be known, you get to be... Uh, done by some companies and they will ask you to do some things or to review some products and, 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 uh, and do some things for them or whatever and, um, and then you slowly, but it's really a slow path, so I've just taken the risk and for, for one year I've been just surviving out of my previous um, generated money from Windows development. Right, right. Leo, now, I mean, you've done a lot of different con you know, attempts at monetization. Um, you started out as a donation kind of thing. And we still do that. And we still break. You do all donations. of these things, and, yeah. and, and then you have big sponsors like like Dell. Right. We had. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> I mean, but you had big sponsors. I mean, what? I, and nothing's worked. Or oh no no. I, we're uh, we're going to continue to do both those things. I always want it to be free. Uh, people are very generous in their donations, and what I've tried to explain is that the donations pay for infrastructure, but not salaries. So the podcast breaks even with the donations. Uh, and then what I but everybody's volunteering their work, including me. And uh, the, then the idea was, well, we'll get advertising. We use an ad agency, we use PodTrack, and uh, they, the, the money we make from that then goes to salaries. And you know, right now we only have one advertiser. I think we're, the ad campaigns were very, they were all experimental, but they were very successful. I think we're getting good. many of them will return. I'm very patient right now. I don't think that it's going to be a big business for a while, a year or two. But I think ultimately. Um, even a single podcast can make money, and a network really, really can be a business. Absolutely, right, right. I mean, I think advertisers will come to us. I think what we offer is unique and very powerful advertisers. Advertisers are 
Now, they used to think about, uh, in terms of cost per thousand and eyeballs or, or ears and how many audience impressions they're making. Now, the ad world is talking about this thing called engagement. They want to not merely get your ears or eyeballs, but they want to engage you. And I can't think of a better medium, frankly, for engaging people than podcasting. So I think advertisers will come to us. Controller as a delegate to the remote machine. And I send it as a one-way void um, for, um, method and said, hey, I need the data for this file, or excuse me, this transaction, let me know when you're done. So, the, that, so it was free, everything was going, and the machine would actually contact me back using distributed objects and give me that NS data object, and it worked. <laughs> it worked. Yeah.